Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and part two of my uh, Kitbash US Airborne video series. Um, I'll pop the uh, a link to the uh, the first video in the link in the description below. Um, but in that video, I went through the process that I use um, when kit bashing. And at the end of that video, I'd completed this, which is the which is a US Airborne NCO. Um, and if you've seen that video, you'll tell I was really rather happy <laughs> with how that turned out. Um, just a cracking looking miniature. So what I'm going to do in this video is just run through the painting process. What I won't be doing though is painting it sort of live <laughs> in a 40, 45 to 50 minute video. I don't think that's what people want to see. Um, and I don't particularly like painting live because I'm not very good at it. Um, what I'm going to do though is run through the different colours, techniques and the stages. Um, and come back and show you exactly what I've done uh, every, every, every now and again. From the block painting I've completed so far. Right up until fully based and some winter effects applied to the figure and um, so before we start um all the colors i'm going to use in this video are uh, vallejo They're, i primarily use vallejo paints anyway uh, apart from my washes so if you do use a citadel or any other brand there's plenty of resources out there you can use to convert your paints from your chosen brand into vallejo and vice versa um, and this video is meant to be more of a guide than anything you know take take the colors and, and, and run with them you know if you want to introduce new um new colors or new techniques you know the minutes are yours um go for it to what i would say um so on to the painting so let's have a look at what i've done so far let's get a focus in on this guy so as you can see very very basic painting at the moment but this this is how i roll and <laughs> this is how i roll when i i paint ball tacks and miniatures um limited palette so i've used very few paints on this at this stage um, as you can see, it's quite messy because I'm quite a messy painter. Um, it's just one thing I, I, I am. So let's talk and discuss what colours and paints I've used. Let's, let's focus first on the uniform and the helmet. So for this, I've used Vallejo, Vallejo US Olive Drab. Um, before I painted, started painting these US Airborne, I did a, a bit of research online. Uh, there was quite a bit of discussion about what, what was the best colour to use for this, for this, um, for this uniform. Um, now I'm not, I'm not too precious um, about 100% historical accuracy when it comes to my my bolt action miniatures, uh, and this is no exception. I just thought the the, the olive drab worked really well uh, with the rest of the colours. So that's what I've gone for for the helmet and the uniform. Up next is the equipment. So on there is the the rucksack, the pouch, the cover for the entrenching tool, uh, the webbing and the, the the straps on his legs, and also the sling on the um on the thompson machine gun uh, just ba very basic vallejo khaki um up next is the boots the gaiters and the um the, the helmet straps these are vallejo um german camo brown again it's very basically applied to those areas there and last but not least is um vallejo beige brown and i've used this on the um the stock and also the grip or the forward grip there of the of the thompson machine gun what you'll notice is that i haven't yet added any flesh tones or any metallics that's because no metallics because i'm going to give this a really heavy wash and um, the next stage there a really heavy wash of agrax earthshade um or as i like to call it or many people call it liquid talent uh, this is going to do all the shading uh, for me and it's also going to help me identify where i need to put the highlights um and if you if, because it's a, it's a brown based wash it will colorize the metallics and make them a bit rusty and we don't want that and the flesh i i, I tend to paint flesh separately anyway um, plus people have their own formulas for flesh um that every that people are comfortable with and i have mine and but he will be he will have his flesh on the neck um later on in the process so what i'm going to go away and do now is give it a heavy wash of agret's earth shade once that has dried, I will come back and show you where the magic has taken place. So I shall see you all in a little bit. Okay, and welcome back. So that is the wash applied and dry. So we can just do a bit of a close up on what, what we've got going on here. So there we go. So you can see that. So I applied the, the Agrax wash quite heavily all over the entire figure. And what it's done, it's really brought that, that uh, olive drab dam and it's created shadows and recesses same with the um 
with the rucksack. Bit of pooling there on the uh, the rucks. That's my fault. I didn't. I walked away while it was drying, so yeah, my bad, as as people are prone to say. Um, but it, it and if it does pool like that, we can we can always hide that when we come to do the highlights. It's, it's no it's no great um, problem. Let's uh, let's put it that way. But the rest of the uh, the rest of the wash has worked really quite well. As you can see, it's what I like about this wash is that the the, the gaps between the two different areas, so the, the the webbing and the uniform, it pools in there, creates shadow and depth. And you can be a bit if if like me, you're quite a messy painter. Um, it's a bit of a <laughs> it's, it's a bit of a help. Um, and it's 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 done what Agrax Earthshade does. It provides shadow and depth very very easily. A um, few things that I missed out from the first part of the video is um, I used beige brown there on the, the, the handle of the entrenching tool and also on the um, the handle of the uh, or the grip there on the on the uh, on the, the, the submachine gun. Um, so that's fully dry. So what we need to do now with this is a couple of things. So we need to add the flesh. Um, I, like I mentioned before, everyone has their own techniques, formulas, ways, and means of painting flesh. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna focus on that. What I'll be doing though is adding highlights to all of the areas that I've painted so far. Now, because the the Agrax wash is quite strong um, with the khaki and the the beige brown and the um, the camo uh, German bay German brown, excuse me, on the boots and the helmet straps. I don't really need to add anything to that. I can just use the paint as is. What I tend to do with the olive drab though is add a really, really small um, blob of Iraqi sand. This just brightens it slightly, but it, it means that the, the highlights won't be too stark or, um, or bright. Um, and it just gives a good contrast between the depth that you've achieved with the Agrax Earthshade um, against the highlights that apply to the upper upper areas of the of the, uh, the uniform. So I'm going to go away and do that now. Um, like I say, I'll do the highlights and also the flesh. Um, so when I come back, that will all be fully completed. So I shall see you all in a little bit. Hello and welcome back. And quite a bit has been done. Let's have a look. Let's have a look what I've been up to. I've been quite busy. Um, so I did a bit more uh, than the highlights at this stage. As you can see, it's pretty much done. Uh, I still need to add a bit more for the um, the winter effect, but I'll get to that in the next stage. But let's have a look. So as I mentioned in the previous the previous part of the video, um, highlights. So you can see that the highlights on the uniform they're not they're not over the top, they're not too stark, but they just they pop. I think that's that's what adding the Iraqi sand to the um, the original olive drab really does make that that green pop, but not too much, not so it's so stark. And then what I've done is I've just used um, the other colours, so khaki and the beige brown and the German camo brown, just to do and um, put the highlights on the other parts of the figure. So the additional parts are complete at this stage. As you can see, I've opted to give give the chap a pair of gloves rather than paint his hands. Just a, for me, it's just a quick way of. Um, avoiding painting skin because I, I don't really like painting skin <laughs> so giving him gloves in a winter scene yeah bit of cheating but i don't mind um what else have i done um i've added i've sort of i've used metallics on the um on the the, the thompson smg there that's just an 80 20 mix of um vallejo gunmetal gray and vallejo black um just gives it a more sort of burnished darker look on the metal uh, what else have we done uh, i used um the German um, camo brown to do the um, the strap there on the back of his helmet, and that's, oh, and I also added the um, the airborne decal there. I need to add his his NCO stripes, but I'll, I'll do that later on in the process. Um, but there we go. I mean, if you were if you were running um, airborne in 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 Europe, um, that's a finished figure. Didn't take too long, and I, I normally batch paint these. Uh, I can do between five and ten in one go. Um, they're not too not too taxing because it's a limited palette so you're not using that many paints it doesn't take that too it doesn't take too long at all so we could call that finished what i need to do now in the next stage is add a bit of winter stuff and um, to make it fit in with the rest of the the um, the project so what what will we doing i'm going to add a bit of white wash um to the helmet sort of um but a bit of camouflage and i'm going to add a bit of um snow effect just to the the, the lip of the helmet to make it look as if some snow recently fallen snow has gathered on the um the lip or the ridge of the helmet and then i'm going to pop them on a base 
So I've got a base prepared, one of my, my scenic ones that fit in with the rest of the US Airborne. What I'm also going to do as well is show you um, a few others that I've done, uh, just so you can get a sense of, of the things you can do uh, with, with, with kit bashing these guys. And also, um, just to outline the, the colours that I use for doing the great coat as well. Uh, quite a few people have asked me uh, when I've been posting these, what colour do I use for the great coat? So I'll get to that in the next stage. So, there we go, he's pretty much done. But the next stage will be him fully completed and ready to be introduced to the rest of the platoon. So I shall see you all in a little bit. Hello and welcome back to the final stage of the video. We're, we're at the end, we've finished, everything's everything's painted and based. And here is the completed the completed chap. Let's just see if we can get us to focus. There we go. So there he is, he's done, he's finished. Um, as you can see, he's based on the normal kind of scenic base that I like to use in my bolt action figures. And I've applied the, the winter effect to the helmet. I keep it quite minimal. I don't go over the top with them um, with, with snow effects on these guys. I just like it on, on the um, on the helmet. So what I've done is I've applied a very, very um, light sort of spattering of, of, um, of whitewash on there. This was, this was applied using a bit of sponge and some Vallejo white paint. Just very, very carefully stippled on. And then with the snow that's built up or accumulated on the uh, the edge of the rim of his helmet, I just use this, which is Army Painter Battlefield Snow, mixed with PVA glue and then very, very carefully applied with a cocktail stick. One of the, uh, <laughs> one of the best tools in my modeling armory, the humble cocktail stick. So in the last part, I did say I'd show you a few others that I've worked on just to show you what you can do. Um, with you know kit bashing these guys, let's just get these into focus, and we'll run through. There we go. So from left to right, that's another NCO. The, in fact, these two are NCOs here. As you can see, one's in a great coat, one's in a standard uniform. We've got the um, the camouflage uh, or the uh, the snow effects. This is the this is the chap I mentioned in the very very first video. Um, he is he's made of very, bits of pieces. So um, the head is from the British Airborne box with that bandage and the arms. Uh, one is from the Airborne box and the left arm there is from the um, the US Infantry box. I just think that, that that's a really good. I don't know. Gives him lots of character. And then another thing I was talking about. So poses. So we've got one guy there, he's clearly having a rest, having a bit of a cigarette there. And then we've got this guy in his great coat, who's clearly in the middle of combat doing something that looks rather dangerous. Um, the, so with, with the guys in great coats, the painting is largely the same, uh, but I did say I'd, I'd outline exactly how I paint these. Now these, the um, the base for the great coat is an 80-20 mix of um, Vallejo, um, German black brown, and Vallejo, um, field drab um, mix these together and you get a, a really nice brown color again same technique uh, agrax wash and then the basic highlights afterwards but that is the way that i paint the great coats but aside, that aside the um, the technique is largely the same as you can see the equipment there and the bases so there we have it that's the uh, the end of the second part of the video let's just have one last look at the uh, the guy in question um Considering that at one point he was just, you know, bits and pieces in, a, in bits boxes and on a sprue, I've now got another NCO. So this guy's going to be leading my third section in the project. Um, and what I'm going to do is the bits and pieces that were left over from the, the first video, they're going to be put to good use in building some guys for him to command. But there we go, I'm calling that finished. And I'm really, very, very happy with how that turned out. Super happy. Okay. I hope you found this and the previous video helpful. Um, if you've got any comments or questions about this or kit bashing or gaming in general, uh, just leave them down below and I'll certainly respond to all comments and questions. But as always, thanks for watching. Do take care. Me a dice roll well. And I'll catch you all in the next video. So bye bye for now.